Welcome back. It is, we're on part four of the record, what's going to be the recording, but this is, we're on the second half of Shabbat for Saturday, October 10th, 2020, which is also Tishri 22 of the Hebrew calendar, the year 5781. This is Shemini Atzeret, and we are going to begin the Brit Kadashah reading of this week's Shabbat services, beginning with Matthew chapter 17, uh, starting with verse 1. After six days, Yeshua takes with him Peter and Jacob and John, his brother, and brings them up a high mountain by themselves. Now he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with Yeshua. Peter responded to you to Yeshua, Master, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three Sukkot here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice met of the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I love with him. I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down terrified. But Yeshua came and touched them. Get up, he said. Stop being afraid. And lifting their eyes, they saw no one except Yeshua alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Yeshua commanded them, saying, Do not tell anyone about the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. And I'm going to continue this to the end of this segment. Um, the disciples question him, saying, Why then do the Torah scholar, scholars say that Elijah must come first. Yeshua replied, Indeed, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. I tell you that Elijah already came, and they didn't recognize him, but did to him whatever they wanted in the same way the Son of Man is about to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them about John the Immerser, or as we know, John the Baptist. And the next segment is Mark chapter 12. Um, now, my book says we are to read to um, from 28 to 33. I'm going to continue and finish this segment. Um, and this segment is entitled Love Ends the Argument. One of the Torah scholars came and heard them debating, saying that Yeshua had answered them well. He asked them, which commandment is first of all? Yeshua answered, The first is Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the scholar said to him, You have spoken the truth that he is Hachad, and besides him there is no other, and to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love the neighbor as oneself is much more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Yeshua saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God and no one dared any longer to question him. And we're going to read the entire chapter of John. Um, anticipating hostility at Sukkot. After these events, Yeshua was walking about in Galilee. He did not want to walk in Judea, because the Judean leaders wanted to kill him. Now the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles was near, therefore his brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, so your disciples also may see the works you are doing. No one who wants to be well known does everything in secret. If you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers were trusting in him. Therefore Yeshua said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always at hand. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify that its works are evil. You go on up to the feast. 
I'm not going to this feast because my time hasn't yet fully come. After saying these things, he stayed in the Galilee. But after his brothers went to the feast, he also went, not openly, but secretly. Then the Judean leaders were searching for him at the feast and kept asking, Where is that fellow? There was a lot of murmuring about him in the crowd. Some were saying, he is good, but others were saying, not so. He leads the people astray, yet no one spoke openly about him for the fear of the Judean leaders. And the next segment is entitled, Teaching at the Temple. About halfway through the feast, Yeshua went up to the temple and began teaching. Then the Judean leaders were amazed, saying, How does this man know so much, having never been taught? Yeshua answered, My teaching is not from me, but from him who sent me. If anyone wants to do his will, he will know whether my teaching comes from God or it is myself speaking. Whoever speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him, he is true and there is no unrighteousness in him. Hasn't Moses given you the Torah? Yet none of you keeps it. Why are you trying to kill me? The crowd answered, you have a demon. Who's trying to kill you? Yeshua answered, I did one good work and all of you are, are amazed because Moses has given you circumcision, though it is not from Moses, but from the patriarchs. You, you circumcise a man on Shabbat. If a man receives circumcision on Shabbat so that the Torah of Moses may not be broken, why are you angry that I healed a man's whole body on Shabbat? Do not judge by appearance, but judge righteously. Righteously. Then some of the people from Jerusalem were saying, isn't this the person they're trying to kill? Look, he speaks openly and they're saying nothing to him. Can it be that the leaders know he is the Messiah? But we know where this person is from. But the Messiah, whenever he may come, no one knows where he is from. Then while teaching in the temple courts, Yeshua cried out, you know both who I am and where I am, I am from. I have not come on my own, but the one who sent me is true. You do not know him, but I know him because I am from him and he sent me. Then they were trying to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him because his hour has, had not yet come. Yet many from the crowd believed in him and were saying, when the Messiah comes, he won't perform more signs than this person has will he? The Pharisees heard people in the crowd murmuring these things about him, and the ruling Kohanim and Pharisees sent guards to arrest him. Yeshua said, I am with you only a little while longer, and then I am going to the one who sent me. You will look for me, but will not find me. Where I am, you cannot come. The Judean leaders then said among themselves, where is this person about to go? that we shall not find him. He's not going to the diaspora to teach the Greeks, is he? What did he mean by saying, you will look for me, but will not find me? Where am I? Where, where I am, you cannot come. Satisfying spiritual thirst. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Yeshua stood up and cried out loudly, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says out of his innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Ruach, whom those who trusted in him were going to receive, for the Ruach was not yet given, since Yeshua was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some of the crowd said, this man really is the prophet. Others were saying, this is the Messiah. Still others were saying, the Messiah doesn't come from the Galilee, does he? Didn't the scripture say that the Messiah comes from the seed of David and from Bethlehem, David's town? So a division arose in the crowd because of Yeshua. Some wanted to capture him, but no one laid hands on him. And he most certainly came from the seed of David and from Bethlehem. Religious adversaries, then the guards, returned to the ruling Kohanim and Pharisees. 
who asked them, why didn't you break him? Never has anyone spoken like this man, the guards answered. The Pharisees responded, you haven't been led astray also, have you? Have any of the rulers or Pharisees believed in him? No, but this mob that doesn't know the Torah, they are cursed. Nicodemus, the one who had come to Yeshua before and was one of them, said to them, Our Torah doesn't judge a man unless it first hears from him and knows what he is, what he's doing, does, he, does it? They answered him, You aren't from the Galilee too, are you? Search and see that no prophet comes out of the Galilee. Then everyone went to his own house. And that is the reading of the Brit Kadasha for this week. So I'm going to close this with prayer. And we're going to open this up to an altar call. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Yeshua, who taught us so much while he was here. And it's in the word, and we can look at the lessons that he gave for us to follow. He was the perfect role model for us uh, on how to live. And, and only he was the only one that was perfect in this world, that ever lived in this world. We thank you for this word, and we thank you um, for Yeshua and, and for his the life that he laid down for each and every one of us. It was a sacrifice that no one could ever do but him. And we thank you, Yeshua, as well. So Father God, as we, we bring this the Brick Kadasha reading to a close, we thank you for this, this teaching. And we know the one that you sent for us, Yeshua, you were well pleased in. We know, we know that you were. Um, and we know that he abided in you while he was here on earth. And he encourages us to abide in him and rest in him. We thank you in the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen and amen. And speaking of Yeshua, this is a bridge into talking about getting saved, getting born again. And we mentioned Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus actually went to went to Yeshua in the night, and he, he wanted to understand um, a few things. And um, we're going to talk about that in John chapter 3. Nicodemus came, he, he, he was one of the Pharisees, and he came, uh, he came to Yeshua, he had some questions for him, and Yeshua told him about uh, the fact that you have to be born again in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to read this right now um, in chapter 3, A Pharisee Comes Seeking Truth. Now, there was a man, a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jewish people. He came to Yeshua at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, have come from God, for no one can perform these signs which you do unless God is with him. Yeshua answered him, Amen, amen. I tell you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus said to him. He cannot enter his mother's womb a second time and be born, can he? Yeshua answered, Amen, amen, I tell you. Unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Very key words here. Do not be surprised that I said to you, you all must be born from above. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone 
born of the Spirit. How can these things happen? Nicodemus said. Yeshua answered, You're a teacher of Israel, and you do not understand these things? Amen, amen, I tell you, we speak about what we know and testify about what we have seen, yet you all do not receive our testimony. If you do not believe the earthly things I told you, how will you believe when I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up into heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe has been condemned already, because he has not put his trust in the name of the one and only Ben Elohim. Now, This is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light so that their deeds will not be exposed. But whoever practices the truth comes to the light so it may be made known that his deeds have been accomplished in God. And as I said, Salvation comes through Yeshua, and Yeshua alone. He came to the world to redeem the world. And salvation can only be achieved through him. Because the the world will tell you there's many paths to heaven, but that's not true. That would just negate everything that Yeshua did. And salvation is deliverance from sins and their consequences. And Yeshua took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross. And he also took our illnesses when they they were beating him. Um, and by his stripes, we are healed. The world can be redeemed of sin through Yeshua only. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. In First John 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you've never accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, and you've never asked for forgiveness of sins and would like that now, and you would like to become a member of the family of God, a child of God, and want to be born again and saved and and look forward to eternal life and not eternal death. You're going to have one or the other, and one will be in heaven and one will be in hell. You could say this prayer and be born again and saved. Father God, I come to you today to confess that I am a sinner. I've broken your holy laws, and I, I realize I can't get to heaven on my own. But I also realize that I want to turn my life around and I want to ask for forgiveness. I repent of my sins today. I believe that your son came to the earth for the very purpose of redeeming me from my sins. I believe with all my heart that he died on the cross. I believe he was buried. I believe he rose again from the dead. I believe he's very much alive and is at your right hand right now. And I believe he's coming again and is coming very soon. I'm asking you, Yeshua, to come into my life, into my heart, to come and live in me. Send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life. I accept the gift of salvation and I accept the offering of the gift of eternal life with you and the Father. I believe that you are the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and I believe you are the Messiah. I believe you are my Lord and Savior, and I declare that right now. And I believe that I am, through you, saved and healed, delivered, set 
free and born again, free of sin and the consequences of sin. I believe through you and you alone that I am healed of all illnesses. I'm healed and healthy of mind, body, and soul in Yeshua's precious name. Amen and amen. And if you said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I would suggest you get into a Bible-based Messianic congregation or Gentile church, one that opens the Bible and not makes up man-made doctrine to fit in. Uh, it, we, need to, we need to stick to the word of God. It's very important. And to stick to the word of God, I would suggest that you get a copy of the Bible. Um, the only three, the only versions that I would tell you to stay away from are the Queen James Version and also um, versions, the 21st century versions that have omitted um, important information from the Bible. So they have falsified God's word, which is something that we're not to do. Um, and I will get into that a little bit tomorrow. Um, so you can, where you can find, um, where you can find a good version is on Bible Hub or Bible Gateway. Again, I'll go into greater detail in tomorrow's service when we do the altar call. I am about to close today's Shabbat service and uh, with a, a blessing, the Aaronic blessing, also known as the priestly blessing. Very important. Um, heard in um Jewish synagogues uh, of all kinds, Orthodox, Reform, Messianic, uh, as well as Gentile churches of all denominations. Um, this is the benediction that is used at the end of every service. It is found in number six, verses 22 to 27. Um, and as a child of God, you are entitled to this blessing. Um, so if you were just born again and saved, you may receive this blessing as well. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons. He wanted them to gather them because the Lord God wanted to place his name upon the children of Israel. And he also wanted to give the blessing to, the, to them. And when you are born again and saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you and you are sealed with his name, with God's name. He does place his name on you. You are sealed. So here is the blessing. I'm going to say it in Hebrew and then in English. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. And as Shabbat draws to an end, the aroma of sweet spices lingers as the flame is extinguished until next week. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord Adonai is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Blessed are you, Adonai, our King, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the various spices. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the lights of fire. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who distinguishes between holy and secular. Shavua Tov. Have a good week. And we will see you tomorrow with Simchat Torah services. God bless.